before your bird's coming, you, you have made sure that by the time your bird's coming, water is ready with the glucose and the vitamin. You release your birds, you put your birds in the brooder, and they start drinking. You have to make sure that within the first two hours, you don't give them food. All they are going to do in the first two hours is to drink the water, which has the glucose and the vitamin. So within the first two hours, we are not giving food. So after two hours, we are going to give them food. You can use these plastic feeders, you can use the wooden feeders, unfortunately I don't have a sample right now to show you. So you put feeds, remember at, at, at day one you can use the crumble, uh, the starter pellet, the starter crumble, you can use the mash, but it is very advisable to use the starter crumble at the beginning because it has a very high uh, protein level uh, and it is when the birds pick one piece of the crumble mm, they get satisfied first because when they pick one piece of the crumble it has all the nutrients together compared to the ones which are eating the mash so it is very important to start our birds on the crumble then we can shift to the mash after the one week so when you want them to attain the weight they are supposed to attain at in the first seven days when you have a good beginning you are very sure that the end will be very good so it is very important to think about a crumble for the first uh, one week for the first seven days then you shift to the mash or you can continue and do pellets the first one week is very important so after two uh, after two hours you're going to fill your feeders with food and you make sure that uh, you put them in position you put them in position adjacent to next to the drinkers you want the birds to eat but after eating you want them to run and take water mm? so when you put this drinker here you're going to have chicks surrounding it and eating I mean the feeder you are going to have chicks surrounding it and eating after eating they are all going to turn and drink water okay so you make sure the feeders are closed to the drinkers and you make sure that fire is also evenly distributed so your birds are going to eat they go back and drink water they go back and uh, get warmth so warmth is evenly distributed everywhere they, they they are but your drinkers have to also be evenly distributed you don't want your broilers to walk for a long distance to get to get water or feeds you want them to remain in the same place because if they move a lot they're going to use the energy the energy that is supposed to be adding on the muscles is going to be used in walking in moving to look for food and water so you make sure uh, the spacing at day old is supposed to be 40 chicks per square meter so while you're planning your brooder you make sure you put spacing in consideration 40 chicks per square meter we continue increasing we start increasing after one week we increase the space we increase the space and by four weeks we are at 10 birds per square meter so we start at 40 chicks per square meter and we end at 10 birds per square meter broilers don't need too much space because we don't want them to do too much exercise we want them to remain in a small space where they don't use a lot of energy to move uh, to move to look for food and to look for water so this is literally what you have to do while you are preparing your brooder uh, the most important things in a brooder one is pre-preparation which we talked about the things that you do before you bring in your chicks the next one is temperature management ventilation humidity feed and water management if we talk about temperature management first of all we have said that before we bring in our chicks we have put the source of heat as you can see uh, my uh, stoves but on day one we have to ensure the temperatures are at 34 degrees Celsius the chicks are not able to control their body temperature they literally depend on the external sources for their body temperature so we have to make sure that we, ha we are at optimal temperatures whereby we are going to have uh, our sources of heat and make sure that we are at 34 degrees Celsius we have our thermometer that is going to help us to monitor the temperatures but other than the thermometer if you're not able uh, to 
access a thermometer in your area, what we do, we observe the behavior of the chicks around the brooder. When the temperatures are too high, the chicks run away from the source of heat. They all go to the sides. They go to the sides and pile themselves on the sides. You'll find when they are away, they are all on the sides. When the temperatures are too high, they all come and surround. They pile themselves around the source of heat. When the temperatures are optimal, if the temperatures are at the body temperature of the chick, what the chick wants, the chicks are going to be evenly distributed all over the place. They are going to be evenly distributed. They are not going to be, you know, they, they make some noise which is minimal, which is which shows that they are satisfied. But when the temperatures are too low, hmm, the, temp the, the noise will show you that they are not comfortable. And when the temperatures are too high, you find they are panting. They all spread their body down. They spread their feathers their wings and they start panting they start panting one thing uh, you need to note is when you have too low temperature when the temperatures are low it is going to affect your production how uh, the birds are going to use their energy to produce heat so the feeds that they are eating are being used to produce heat to warm themselves up remember we are giving them feeds to grow and have muscle have the meat that we want to sell that is how we make money but when we don't produce the optimal temperatures they are going to now use the food that we are use, we are giving them in order to produce warmth in order to produce heat they are going to metabolize the food to metabolize the food and produce heat for themselves so they are not going to grow at the rate that we expect them to grow they are also going to go into putting on a lot of feathers so that they can cover themselves and be warm mm? so instead of the broiler growing fast and being fat it is going to be putting on a lot of feathers and trying to heat up itself when the temperatures are very high that the bird the bird is also going to struggle mm, to um it is also going to struggle to lower the body temperature down so it is also going to use the feeds that you're giving it to be able to use energy to lose the temperatures the temperatures to be to cool down when it is panting it is trying to cool down so we lose in such way the birds where the temperatures are so low and so high they also get more susceptible especially when the temperatures are low they are not going to grow fast Mm? They are not going to grow fast and this also makes them uh, sometimes susceptible uh, to infections because uh, their body weight is going to be below standard. But most importantly, if you don't gain the recommended weight at in the first week, it will be very hard for you to gain it. The brooding season, the brooding period is a very important step in uh, production in broiler production what you do long at the beginning is very hard for you to collect later on one uh, relative of temperature management is what we call ventilation in brooder management we always have to have minimum ventilation minimum ventilation because we don't want to lose heat we don't want to lose heat escaping we want the uh, remember you're buying the briquettes remember you're paying the electricity that you're using for brooding so we don't want the heat to be lost but we also ha want air fresh air to come in because the birds need oxygen to breathe so what we do we do what we call minimum ventilation you use curtains you use tapperings you cover uh, part of the open side of the house but you leave a part up we want air to come in from up because we don't want to cause chilling if air comes up, comes in from down it causes chilling it comes and meets the body of the bird which is uh, where the temperatures are high and is the, air, the cold air comes in it causes chilling and that can cause death so what we want is air to come in from up and it comes down as it is moving down it is going to meet the hot air the warm air coming up and they are going to the currents are going to exchange so by the time this uh, fresh air reaches the body of the bird it is going to be warm so here we are not going to cause chilling so you always make sure that you leave the space for ventilation is left up the space for ventilation is left up and ventilation is minimum because we don't want to lose heat the heat that we are producing we don't want to lose it in the outside uh, the other thing we do is that when the temperatures are too high we can flap off 
the curtain or the tapering on one side we just pull it off from up on one side a bit for 10 minutes and we do this in a, about we can do it in a, a, a spacing of four hours you come and pull it off a bit the fresh air comes in more and then you put it up again but you don't put it up to down you just flap it off we'll go out and i'll show you how we do it so you flap it off a bit on the side and you let the uh, warm air uh, the fresh air come in the other thing you do when the temperatures are too high you can reduce on the source of heat if you have three charcoal stoves right now you can pick one if the temperatures are so low you can increase your source of heat you increase on your ventilation if your ventilation is too much you increase a bit and also you make sure you increase on your source of heat for instance remember that uh, temperatures are so much also um, affected by the environmental temperature for instance if it is too cold if it is a cold weather you, you you're going to you're going to need more source of heat compared to when it is hot okay so you have to always uh, understand what is going out uh, going on outside it is going to affect your brooder remember the ceiling you have to have a tapering on the ceiling but make sure you always disinfect we don't want things to fall down the dirt and all that we have to make sure that we have a clean environment we don't want to introduce our birds to infection we have to make sure that everything is clean uh, the place the point of humidity the birds need to be in a dry place in a dry place because the coldness when it gets cold they are all going to run away from the cold litter from the cold uh, beddings and they are going to pile themselves on the sides and when they pile themselves on the side most of them die because of suffocation but the other area the other area of humidity is what we call ammonia when you have a lot of uh, damp litter a lot of wet litter you have the production of ammonia is increased Increased. Ammonia is very dangerous to your buds. Ammonia affects the respiratory system. It causes irritation into the in the respiratory system, which predisposes the buds to secondary bacterial infections, which include mycoplasma. It includes uh, E. coli, and sometimes you get uh, also uh, the likes of salmonella coming because the immune system of the buds has gone low so you always make sure one of the things you have to fight is ammonia make sure you keep your uh, the, the litter dry you have to be turning your litter on a daily basis you turn the litter on a, a daily basis and also think about the ventilation always allowing air to come in to, uh, when air comes in it picks up the ammonia okay so you have to make sure that the ammonia levels are kept minimal if the uh, ammonia levels go high your buds are going to be susceptible to infections they are going their eyes are going to be affected the ammonia is going to irritate their eyes and some of them will, uh, will end up being brined so we don't want ammonia in the poultry houses uh, we talked about ventilation we said when it is very hot we we increase on our, on our ventilation so you come out you pull off flap off this this tapering a bit remember we said we always have to ventilate from up we don't ventilate from down we don't want cold air to come on the body of the chicks that's why we ventilate from uh, from up so whenever it is so hot you come and flip a bit to make sure that you increase on the fresh air that is coming in but this is done only for 10 minutes you flip it off for 10 minutes and you take it back this is repeated after four hours you flip it off for 10 10 minutes in four hours and you put it back you are increasing on the level of ventilation but you don't want remember at this point we are balancing temperature and ventilation we want free air we want fresh air sorry but we also want the temperature to remain optimal so we are not going to leave we would have left it open because we want maximum ventilation but if we do maximum ventilation it is going to affect our temperature we are going to lose the heat that's why we do minimum ventilation this is the area we are leaving for air to come in to our buds uh, right now my chicks are one week old and I want to show you what is happening make sure you always have a foot bath at the entrance of your brooder as we talked about in the beginning when we were preparing the brooder let's go inside and we see how our chicks are behaving 
right now these chicks are one week old remember we said we are breeding our chicks for two weeks that is uh, 14 days my my chicks are one uh, one week old remember we talked about the arrangement of feeders the arrangement of water you have a feeder it is next to a drinker a feeder a drinker a feeder a drinker so what we want is our birds are eating after eating they should turn and find water water has to be very near they have to have water in every place they don't have to run long distances to look for water as you can see my birds are evenly distributed in their brooder that means i have optimal temperature if my temperatures were lacking you would find the birds piling on the sides but my birds are right now all distributed evenly that means they have the right temperatures so one thing you have to know is you have your waters your water uh, containers the drinkers adjacent to the feeders so that is a feeder this is a drinker the birds are feeding coming back and drinking going back and feeding the same happens there these ones are drinking feeding drinking feeding so you arrange in a way that your birds have access to water and food at all times because you want them to grow uniformly when you don't have even distribution of uh, of feeds and water the birds are not going to grow uniformly and you also have to ensure that you have enough feeders and enough drinkers and you can see my charcoal stoves have reduced because the birds are growing so the temperatures are now uh, i have to keep a temperature of uh, 29 28 degrees Celsius. but at the beginning i was keeping a temperature of uh, 30 34 and i go i went reducing by one degree every day so you reduce by one degree every day until when you reach around 29 28 degrees Celsius, and you keep it around there so right Right now I don't need many briquettes, uh, many charcoal stoves as at the beginning. So you ensure that you have the right temperature at the right time. Uh, we talked about the litter. You see that right now I'm not covering the litter with paper because when I brought in birds on the first day they would eat anything. Anything they find they are going to call it food. But after they have mastered that food is in the feeders, I, know, I, I, I stop covering the litter because they know when they want to eat they are going to run to the feeder they eat they go back and drink their water and and so forth and so forth remember always you have to make a brooder in relation to the number of birds that you have if you have 1000 birds you need a, a different space compared to one who is brooding a hundred so remember we said we are we the spacing should be 40 chicks per square meter 40 chicks per square meter that means you get the number of birds you are going to to keep you compute the space that they need while you're computing the space the space needed by these birds you have to bear in mind the equipment that you're going to use think about the feeders think about the drinkers think about the charcoal stove so you always have to bear in mind the birds need this space what about the containers the, the feeders what about the equipment so you always have to make sure you bear in mind uh, the different equipment in computation of the space that you're going to use remember ventilation is very important after two weeks we shift our birds to the railing section at the railing section at that point they they are uh, their body is able to regulate temperatures remember we said that at the beginning these birds are not able to regulate their body temperatures and we have to make sure that we provide the temperature that they need but after two weeks they are able to regulate their body temperature so we are going to take them to the railing section where we have the open-sided uh, poultry houses and this time around we are not going to cover as we have been covering we are going to do now maximum ventilation Remember in the brooder we are doing minimum ventilation but when we go to the rearing section we are going to do maximum ventilation where the sides are open for air, fresh air to move freely. Thank you so much for uh, following us and if you haven't su subscribed to our YouTube channel please subscribe. Thank you.